Sure, you can give an infinite number of monkeys all the time that they want in front of an infinite number of keyboards and eventually they'll come up with the works of Shakespeare. But I'm not going to be the one who proofs their work. Come to think of it, isn't that what the internet is? So what do we use to interact online? More than likely we use this keyboard, a keyboard like this, or maybe a keyboard on a phone. Now, a keyboard is really just a set. If we're talking about discrete math, and we're talking about set theory, a keyboard is really just a set. It's a set of characters. We've got these lowercase letters, right? Each individual character is a member or an element of that set. We have uppercase letters, we have numbers, we have all these symbols, we have white space. We have, uh, well, all sorts of things. And we represent each one of those individual keystrokes, each one of those, what we're going to call characters, as a single element of that set. And whenever we write this down on, you know, whenever we type it into the computer, if we're representing a character, typically we use single quotes. Those single quotes identify a single element that is a part of that set that is represented by the keyboard. We can combine these into multiple, take multiple characters, put them together into something we call strings, which are identified with these double quotes. So what that brings us to, whenever we're talking about computing, it's going to bring us to a special kind of set called an alphabet. Okay, yes, you've heard the term alphabet before, A through Z, right? Well, whenever we're using it in the context of discrete math, what we're actually talking about is an alphabet is, is really just and it's a finite set. It's a finite set of elements. So I have a finite number of characters that I can enter with this keyboard. But we have other alphabets. For example, we have the Latin alphabet, which is the one that you're familiar with, but we've got the one that is lowercase, just the lowercase. And so that set is A, B, C, all the way up to Z, right? But we also have the uppercase. All right, and so that would be A, capital A, B, C, all the way to capital Z or Z, depending on what continent you're on, right? So we could also combine these two together and have a mixed case alphabet. And that's what the monkeys are typing on, right? Well, almost. What, when we're looking at a keyboard, we also are including other elements like the numbers, like the punctuation, white space, and so forth. But we can also have numeric elements, or excuse me, numeric alphabets, such as the decimal alphabet. So the decimal alphabet would be, what, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 9, right? Because we don't include 10 in this because 10 actually can be created as a string using the elements 1 and 0. We don't care about 17, right? Because that would be the element 1 concatenated with the element 7. That word concatenated is something that we're going to uh, get to in a minute. We also have the binary alphabet. Now the binary alphabet, for those of you who have been e exposed to computing or even just numeric bases, you know about like base two or base five or base eight or base 16. The binary alphabet only requires two elements, a zero and a one to come up with any possible representation of anything inside of memory. We have these transistors inside the computer that are only capable of storing a zero or a one. And so whenever we're storing a zero or one, anything that we're going to be storing, whether it's a number, a letter, uh, a, a sound, you know, a, a, an element of a sound wave, we use these zeros and ones in order to represent that. Now, this keyboard element, uh, excuse me, this keyboard alphabet also concludes things like, you know, the at symbol, the pound sign, the percent sign, uh, caret, asterisk, and so forth. So you add this set with the uppercase and lowercase Latin alphabet sets, and you get the keyboard set. 
Let's get back to those monkeys, shall we? Let's say that if an alphabet is defined by the set A, then a string, and remember, and, and this, it may help if you don't, if you're not familiar with strings, go back to the lesson on sequences. This, the lesson on sequences, a string is basically a sequence. And remember that a sequence is an ordered set of elements or an ordered, uh, el ordered elements from a set that can have duplicates, but it specifically has an order and a specified length. So then a string is any concatenated sequence, once again, there's that word again, sequence of symbols or elements from A. So, think about those monkeys. You know, the monkeys could type anything like game or search, but they could also type things like CBVQ, right? Nonsense. The key is, is that any sequence, you can take any sequence from that keyboard, right? And create a string from it. But the monkeys are not going to type infinitely long strings. You know, even the monkeys are going to need a break from sitting in front of that keyboard. So when we're talking about these strings, we're just talking about combinations of any of those elements from the set but they can't be infinite. Now, when we start defining these strings, they actually are coming from a very large set that is created by that alphabet. So we have the alphabet A, right? Well, A, from A, we can derive two other types of sets. One of them is A star, and another one is A, and it's got this plus sign. Whenever you enter this in the computer, you typically enter it with a plus sign, but it's referred to as a dagger. It's a slightly different uh, shape uh, than the symbol that is used for the plus sign. But anyway, we've got these two sets which are derived from the alphabet. Now, let's start out with A star. The set A star is the set of all possible finite, and remember the monkeys need a break, right? It's a set of all possible finite sequences, or we could call these strings, right? From A, including the empty string. Now, couple of things about the empty string. The empty string, first of all, is a string of length zero. And really, it's a formality to include this empty string in this set. But what you're looking at is a string of length zero. There are no elements in it. And we represent that with the lowercase lambda. Now, A with the dagger or the plus is exactly the same as A star. So it's the same as a star, except it doesn't, does not include the empty string. Now, once again, going back to the monkeys needing a break, any, both of these sets, they, every string that's included in those sets is of finite length. Now, some of them may be incredibly long. It may be the entire works of Shakespeare all in one entire string. But at some point, that string is going to end. Now let's get back to this idea of concatenation. Now, the, the, you know, whenever we created uh, a word like cat, right? So there's, we had a string cat. What we did was we had three elements that were concatenated, brought together. Now there's a couple of ways that we represent this in discrete math. The first one is with something called dot notation. Now, 
anytime you multiply things together, right, you put the dot in between like 5.6 to say 5 times 6. Well, when it comes to strings, the dot usually represents concatenation. Now, unfortunately, we don't have consistency across everything, you know, like all programming languages and so forth when it comes to concatenation. Some, some use a plus sign, some use ampersand, there's all sorts of things. But whenever it comes to discrete math, what we're going to do is we're going to use the dot in order to represent concatenation. Now, maybe I have two strings. Maybe I have one string A one that's called bird, I don't know, uh, and another string A2, which is song, okay? So A1 dot A2, or just A1 A2, both of these are valid ways to represent it, uh, concatenated strings, basically means that we're going to take those two strings, butt them up next to each other, no delimiter, nothing in between them to separate them, and now we have the string bird song. Notice also the order. So we have A1 concatenated with A2, bird comes before song, but if we have A2 dot A1, which is the same thing as A2, A1 without a dot, right? That would be song bird. And that gives us the ability to take and create larger strings. I mean, heck, the initial string from the alphabet is just a concatenation. For example, we have those three elements. That's just a concatenation of C, A, and T in that order. So let's do some examples. And we're gonna start out with the binary alphabet. So we had that binary alphabet which was just zero and one. Now, A star. Well, remember, these sets are huge, containing a lot of elements. None of the strings are going to be of infinite length. So whenever I look at A star, what I've got, the, remember the first one that we're gonna go ahead and list is the empty string. Just, it's, it's zero length, none of the characters. But then we start building strings from the characters that are available to us. So we've got zero, uh, we've got one. So there's the two strings that we have available to us of length one. What about length two? Well, I can have zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one, right? Now, that's all of the ones of length two. Go to length three. How about zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, and one, 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 right? And we can continue to go on. Now, once again, what you're looking at is the strings that are elements of A star have to be of finite length. Now, A with the dagger, right, with the, the plus, just doesn't include the empty string. Well, um, let's assume that we've got, I don't know, this is gonna sound like a really weird alphabet, but how about we have an alphabet that is just, um, how about A, B, and B, A, all right? Or no, how about A, B, and B, C? And let's look at A star. A star, first of all, has lambda, the empty string. It has A, B, it has A, B, A, B, it has A, B, A, B, A, B, right? And then maybe an A, B, B, C, whoop, keep putting those commas. A, B, B, C, and how about B, C, just B, C, B, C, A, B, and so forth, right? <laughs> We could be here a very long time with this. But what are some elements that are not included that look like kind of they should be included? For example, A, the string A, B, C. That looks like it should be included in this, right? I mean, A, B is in the set, B, C is in the set. Problem is, is that to concatenate strings, you can't do any overlapping or replacing or removing of characters. This element is not a member of A star. The reason is, is because AB is 
a member of A, BC is a member of A, but to make that string, you need to have something, for example, you need to either have the individual elements A, B, C, those individual elements, or maybe A, B, and then maybe another element just C by itself, or maybe just the element A, and then the element B, C. You could use that to concatenate those elements to create that string. Otherwise, a does not, you cannot create ABC from the alphabet ABC. All right, so we've done this brief introduction about alphabets and strings in order to get us ready for another topic in discrete math, and that's regular expressions. When we start talking about regular expressions, that gives us a way to narrow down the elements that are in this A star set so that we can get exactly what it is we're looking for in our computing applications.